Hello, how are you? A very warm welcome to this week's online worship from Fort William Kilmally and Kilmanevig. I'm glad that you're able to join us. Today, as you can see, I'm in the Swiss Alps. Well, not really, but Glen Nevis has that look just now. And it is worth a thought, isn't it? Just how good it would be to have the freedom to get to some different places for a while. And in this part of the world, I'm always struck by how fortunate we are to have the most magnificent scenery round about us. But nevertheless, there's always that wee urge to have the chance sometimes to be somewhere different. Today's Bible stories will take in people whose options for being anywhere different were strictly, strictly limited. And we'll see their response to their needs as we go along. We're going to hear two Bible readings now. One of them is from 2 Kings chapter 5, and it's the story of a Syrian general called Naaman, who is healed from his leprosy. And we're also going to hear the story of Jesus meeting a man who had the same condition or a similar condition and of how Jesus dealt with him. That story comes from Mark chapter 1. Let's hear the word of God. This is a reading from 2 Kings chapter 5. Naaman, the commander of the Syrian army, was highly respected and esteemed by the king of Syria, because through Naaman the Lord had given victory to the Syrian forces. He was a great soldier, but he suffered from a dreaded skin disease. In one of their raids against Israel, the Syrians had carried off a little Israelite girl, who became a servant of Naaman's wife. One day she said to her mistress, I wish that my master could go to the prophet who lives in Samaria. He would cure him of his disease. When Naaman heard of this, he went to the king and told him what the girl had said. The king said, go to the king of Israel and take this letter to him. So Naaman set out, taking 30,000 pieces of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of fine clothes. The letter that he took read, This will introduce my officer Naaman. I want you to cure him of his disease. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and exclaimed, How can the king of Syria expect me to cure this man? Does he think that I am God with the power of life and death? It's plain to that he is trying to start a quarrel with me. When the prophet Elisha heard what had happened, he sent word to the king. Why are you so upset? Send the man to me and I'll show him that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariot and stopped at the entrance to Elisha's house. Elisha sent a servant out to tell him to go and wash himself seven times in the river Jordan and he would be completely cured of his disease. But Naaman left in a rage saying, I thought he would at least come out to me. Pray to the Lord his God, wave his hand over the diseased spot and cure me. Besides, aren't the rivers of Banna and Farpar back in Damascus better than any river in Israel? I could have washed in them and been cured. His servants went up to him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something difficult, you would have just done it. Now why can't you just wash yourself as he said and be cured? So Naaman went down to the Jordan, dipped himself in it seven times, as Elisha had instructed, and he was completely cured. His flesh became firm and healthy like that of a child. He returned to Elisha with all his men and said, Now I know that there is no God but the God of Israel. So please, sir, accept the gift from me. Mark chapter 1, beginning at verse 40. A man suffering from a dreaded skin disease came to Jesus, knelt down and begged him for help. If you want to, he said, you can make me clean. Jesus was filled with pity and stretched out his hand and touched him. I do want to, he answered. Be clean. At once the disease left the man and he was clean. Then Jesus spoke sternly to him and sent him away at once after saying to him, Listen, don't tell anyone about this, but go straight to the priest and let him examine you. 
Then in order to prove to everyone that you're cured, offer the sacrifice that Moses ordered. But the man went away and began to spread the news everywhere. Indeed, he talked so much that Jesus could not go into a town publicly. Instead, he stayed out in the lonely places and people came to him from everywhere. Amen. One of the things that I really value, and I think many people do, is the freedom to go where we want to go and to do what we want to do. We've discovered how much we value that over recent months where we've been quite limited and restricted in what the possibilities have been. We've been told to stay at home and the only reason I'm up Glen Nevis today is that I was taking a service further down the Glen earlier on. And we find that hard when somebody else tells us where we can go or where we can't go. Both of the people in the stories we've been hearing had that experience. The little girl is a prisoner of war, taken as a captive to a foreign country and enslaved effectively. She doesn't choose where she lives, where she goes, what she does. That's up to Naaman's wife, who is her mistress. Similarly for the man in the New Testament story, he couldn't go where he wanted because people were so frightened that they would pick up an illness from him that they didn't want him around. When we're told that Jesus had pity on the man that he met, the pity is not just for his current condition. The pity is for the limitations on his life that are in place. And both of these stories show the most powerful compassion. Jesus showed his compassion to the man he met by being willing to talk to him, stand near him, even touch him. When others would have kept their distance because they were frightened, they believed wrongly that the man could have passed on his illness. Jesus finds that his compassion is the driving force, not just for what the man suffers on a day-to-day -day basis, but for the exclusion he faces from his society, from the limited possibilities that will be his going forward. But mostly today, I want to focus on the story from the Old Testament. Because it seems to me that the little girl who annoyingly doesn't even get her name in the story showed a remarkable sense of love and forgiveness and faith. Naaman, after all, is the man who has been responsible for taking her from her home and making her a prisoner. And yet she cares enough for him when he finds he has leprosy to suggest a possible way forward. It's a high risk strategy. If he goes and doesn't get healed, will she be blamed? Will she be responsible? But she has enough trust in the God of her people that she sends him to see a prophet. She sends him off on that journey. And at first Naaman thinks it's a ridiculous idea and then realises that without it, he has no future. He has nothing to look forward to. He has no possibilities lying ahead. And so he gets permission from the king of Syria and he goes off on the journey. He goes and does what he can to get ready. He loads up and he loads up with all kinds of wealth and all kinds of riches. What a waste of time. He's not going to be able to buy his health. In fact, when he goes to the king that he is visiting, he discovers that the king is terrified by his presence. There's nothing he can do. He has no way of addressing the situation. He has no way of helping. And sometimes that's a reminder to us that not every situation can be solved by power and influence and wealth and resources. Sometimes nothing except love and compassion is enough. Eventually, Naaman finds himself at the shack of the prophet, a run-down little hut. And he expects, as is the norm, that he will be treated with uh, welcome and respect and deference. 
And actually the prophet just sends his servant out to speak to him. Doesn't even come out himself. Naaman is affronted. He feels like his position is undermined, but he's being reminded when it comes to your illness, you don't have any status. You don't have any standing. You don't have any authority. He's given advice as to what he should do. Go down to the Jordan and bathe yourself seven times. He's furious. We've got better rivers than that in Syria. If I wanted to go and bathe myself, I could do it there. And he's about to storm off in the half when another servant reminds him, what have you got to lose? If you give up on this because you're too proud, what hope is there of any cure now or ever? And Naaman relents. He goes into the river and he's cured of his leprosy when he comes up the seventh time. He's cured because a little girl loved him enough to give advice that might help, even if it put her in a difficult position. He's cured because he didn't give up when he went to a royal palace and found that wasn't the place to deal with problems like his. He didn't give up when he finds that the prophet doesn't treat him with his customary respect that he normally expects and sends a servant out to meet him. And he's prepared to keep going when his own servant says, look, don't be too proud. Take the advice, see what happens. And all those things are part of the story of Naaman being healed. All those things are part of Naaman's lesson that when it comes to his illness, he's not in charge. He needs to seek help, whoever he might be in his day job, whoever he might be when he's in the palace of the king of Syria. And for us, there's something important in that, isn't there? We're not too important to need help. We're not too significant to require support. We're not too self-contained that we can do everything for ourselves. And the people who might be crucial to us might not be the people who are in the same class or place in society or whatever else. The people who can help us are the ones who know and care and understand whatever our current issue and situation might be. Jesus looked at the man he met and he had compassion on him. He felt sorry for him. He realized that his life was limited and restricted and that he alone had the power to do something about it. And he did it. Sometimes finding the humility to accept help from others is one of the biggest challenges of all. I meet plenty of people who will say, oh, I'm a terrible patient. And it's often because they realize that they're not in control. People who are used to being powerful are not powerful when they're ill or getting treatment or whatever it might be. And sometimes for each of us, having the humility to say, there are things I can't fix, but I can turn to a Lord who can help me. I can pray to a God who might very well humble me before he heals me but who can change things. And maybe that's what we need to hear from the stories of Naaman and from the healing that Jesus offers to the man with leprosy. Now let's come to God in prayer. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you that where there are people that others avoid, don't want to be near, don't want to be in contact with, people that others might shun or exclude, that you refuse to be excluded. You refuse to leave people out from your love. And just as Jesus healed a man with leprosy that, that others wouldn't go near, just as Naaman was healed by the 
events in the story that we reflected on. So you love us, even at the times when the rest of the world might not love us so much or might leave us out or exclude us. Thank you that your love is as broad and as wide as it needs to be to encompass all of us. Forgive us for the times when we let our pride get in the way of seeking the help and support we need, where we want to do everything ourselves and to feel self-reliant when in the real world we're just not. Help us to be willing to trust those who can offer the help and support that we need in whatever form it might come to us. Father, we pray for those people who find themselves, for whatever reason, excluded from our society on a day-to-day -day basis. Those who feel excluded because of their mental well-being. Those who feel excluded because of lack of resources. Those who feel excluded for whatever reason. Help us to have the generosity of the little girl in the story who was willing to help even at a possible cost to herself. Gracious God, we thank you for the world that you have given us and for its beauty. Help us to appreciate it and value it. Help us to recognise how much it means. And especially just now when our ability to travel and to go to different places is limited. Help us to appreciate what's right in our doorstep, what's round about us. Lord God, we pray for people we know who are sick or struggling just now. For those who are going through times of hurt or hardship, especially for those who've been through times of loss, we seek your blessing on each one of them. And we ask that you'll hear us as we round up all of our prayers now in the words of the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for being part of this week's online worship. And I hope you have a very good week ahead. Please stay with us after the benediction for the music that's going to follow. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.